Okay, we are here at the Mobile World Congress, guys, at the Qualcomm booth. Uh, there is something that uh, all of us know at the Mobile World Congress, 5G is the buzzword. 5G is finally here and it's ahead of uh, time. Uh, I've seen a lot of manufacturers, even now behind us, uh, we have a lot of uh, original uh, device manufacturers and equipment manufacturers and brands. They all have 5G devices out in the market. And uh, that's something special. So, wh what do you want to uh, what do you want to say about uh, getting to the market in 2019? Yeah. No, I think this Mobile World Congress is a moment is a moment for celebration for the industry because yes, 5G is finally here. Yes, many people say it's a buzzword, but it's also real, real this year. And this is the Mobile World Congress in which we have seen uh, a number of manufacturers, most of the major uh, uh, Android uh, phone manufacturers, had announced their devices or their plans. You know, have devices um, with 5G as early as uh, the next quarter of this year. Right? And many operators as well are committed to bringing 5G to across regions, going to the United States, and Europe, China, Japan, South Korea, Australia. Uh, yesterday we had our big moment of celebration here in the Qualcomm booth with many people in the ecosystem doing a toast for 5G. So at the end, it's a moment of celebration for the industry because we have worked together so hard for this moment. But this is the year in which users will be able to grab a 5G phone, have a 5G plan, and enjoy for the first time this technology that will transform communications for many decades to come. So I know a lot of hard work has gone into getting these people together and working with so many manufacturers and getting those devices out in time. So before we talk about the details and the advantages of 5G, I want to touch upon what happened and what transpired within Qualcomm how did you bring these guys together? How did you, I mean, suddenly there are like uh, six, seven 5G devices out here and they all have 5G with the chip inside. So how, how did you make that happen and what went through uh, behind the scenes to, you know, get it in a timeline such as, because every 10 years this happens, right? I know every 10 years the generation of the technology changes mm -hmm. and it's a very crucial time and time to market is very important. Uh, so how, how did this all happen? How did this all come together in such a crucial time? Well, it, it comes together by working with the industry, not just now, but for years, if not decades. If you look at the journey from uh, the Qualcomm's journey to get into 5G, the first inventions that relate to 5G from Qualcomm go back even to the 90s, when the company was working on some of the fundamentals of what's now digital communications over wireless technology. And then on the, mid, the middle of the 2000s with the first specific inventions to 5G and going to the last few years working with the ecosystem on prototypes, on trials, on demonstrations. Uh, so to make interoperability tests, to make sure that uh, the devices are ready, the infrastructure is ready, operators are ready. So this at the end is the result of the industry working together for decades. So it was at the end not such a big effort to bring them all together because we have been working together for a while. And I think this was a nice moment to celebrate and to realize and, and again have a toast because 5G is here. Okay, great. So to our users, they all know a bit about 5G. Everyone knows about VOLT. Everyone talks about it. Everyone wants those features in their phones. Does it have dual VOLTE? Is a constant question that we get. So beyond that, what are we gonna see with 5G? Beyond the speeds, we all know it's going to get gigabit speeds. You know that, guys, right? So beyond the speeds, what are we gonna see with 5G? And uh, what's the next step for Qualcomm in getting 5G out there and more, you know, more devices and all that? Yeah. Well, um, yes, 5G is the next generation of cellular communications that comes, uh, each generation comes about every 10 years, as you said. But what makes 5G different from any other transition on cellular communications is that has been designed from the ground up, not just to make phones faster and more responsive. They just will be faster, they will be more responsive. But it has been designed to connect many other things beyond the phones. You will see uh, connected cars with 5G technology. You will see uh, Internet of Things devices uh, like smart meters uh, with uh, 5G. Even uh, robots and industrial applications like manufacturing plants connected all with 5G. Uh, VR, AR devices has been designed with that purpose. It has been designed with the purpose of taking mobile technology to connect all kind of things. So that, that we'll see. 
Uh, even at this Mobile World Congress, Qualcomm announced uh, last week, before the show started, like a second generation of 5G modems to connect things. Okay. And in the, at the show, we announced new platforms and solutions to bring 5G into vehicles, to bring 5G into orbit connected PCs, to bring 5G into fixed wireless broadband assets so operators can uh, deliver home broadband connectivity using okay. 5G as the backhoe. So this is the realization of the promise of 5G and something that Qualcomm has been working for many, many years. How we can take all this great mobile technology that we have developed for our phones and take that to benefit many other industries like uh, again, cars, industries, internal things, all of that. And we'll see that promise realized with 5G starting this year. Okay, so I can say that uh, all these uh, previous generations, they are mostly focused on connecting phones and connecting devices that lets us communicate between each other. And uh, is it okay to say that uh, the connectivity between not just us, but between our devices as well. That's going to happen with 5G. Like, is that what I'm getting? Because I see with the CV2X, I saw the demo here. I see a pedestrian a vulnerable user data that's being transmitted directly to the car, and the car understands it. There is no human interaction here mm -hmm. involved, but that's over 5G. You know, that's part of the 5G standard, right? Yeah. So is it okay to say that 5G is the time when things will start communicating with each other? Is that uh, fine to say that? I think that's a, that's a proper interpretation of 5G. At the end, you will see that 5G, it it will become the connectivity fabric for everything, right? All kind of things will be able to be connected to the internet and to each other with 5G overall. And just like electricity last century was fundamental in fueling a new wave of innovation, where electricity was brought to life, nobody could foresee computers, televisions, and, and machinery operating electricity. We see this thing, the same thing with 5G. 5G is this platform for innovation in which will enable many other industries. We don't know exactly what will be created. It's up to now a new generation of innovators just to create something with this technology foundation. But we're very excited because we know it has been designed with that capability, and now it's exciting to see what people will do for 5G starting in 2019. Yes, it's pretty much like uh, electricity, right? Uh, when electricity was invented, no one knew that we were going to see things like this. I think no one saw the coming of even the LED after electricity. Yes. So I guess it's going to be a great time after 5G. And uh, I just want to touch upon one more thing. I know about the millimeter waves. Quickly guys, uh, to explain the millimeter waves, it operates in a different higher bandwidth spectrum. So there is higher bandwidth because it's a different spectrum. It's a higher frequency. 20, about 20 gigahertz, 24 to 28 if I'm not wrong? We have it about 24 gigahertz, 28, 39 gigahertz. Okay, so it's like very high frequency, very new technology. What's, uh, I know that Qualcomm has worked around this very specifically and uh, has done a big breakthrough. Yeah. So can you uh, touch a little bit on the millimeter waves and how it is going to help us? Yes, absolutely. So millimeter waves, uh, as you said, are those very high frequencies that can bring a significantly more capacity to mobile networks, but they suffer from blockage. So it's very hard for those frequencies just to kind of go through any object and, 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 and they don't bounce around very well. So it, they, those were supposed to be impossible to work with for mobile communications, right? Yeah. Uh, that's something that Qualcomm has been working for a few years and those problems have been resolved. So we have been able to resolve the, the challenges with millimeter wave, how you can connect uh, to the base stations, not just using line of sight, but also uh, b benefit from the balancing of the signals and always, all, all the time, find a way in which you communi communi communicate to the base station. And how you can basically bring all together, all that technology, into the phone. Because it's not just you need to make millimeter wave work, but you need to be put it in a phone with the cost effectiveness, with the power consumption, with the uh, size that uh, pre that enable the form factors that people expect from smartphones today. So that requires even going beyond the modem. You need the modem, yes, but you also need the RF front end. And think about that from, as a system perspective, from the modem to the antenna, how you bring everything together to make millimeter wave work. Okay. So big challenge, yes, but the challenge has been solved. And this year, 2018, with the uh, rise of 5G, we'll see also the first millimeter wave networks and the first millimeter wave devices bringing all this capacity and speed uh, to, uh, again, smartphones that we love. Great. So one key advantage of millimeter waves, what is that? 
Uh, is it just bandwidth, uh, more capacity, or is it uh, something else? Is it more? All of that. It's a, it brings more capacity, and brings with more capacity, you can have faster speeds as well. So it will be key in many networks to bring multi gigabit speeds of uh, uh, kind of performance, as well as lower latency as well. So oh, it's yeah. more responsive. You're yeah. playing a game, right? And it's a cloud-based game. Uh, the time that you shoot is important. It can mean the difference between life or death, right? In yeah. your kind of uh, overall <laughs> game, but also for uh, other applications like uh, connectivity to the cloud, for example. Uh, with the uh, high performance and lower latency of 5G, as well with millimeter wave, for example, uh, it will feel like the cloud lives in your device. It will be imperceptible as uh, you're using, storing your uh, f pictures right, or your videos on the cloud or the, your device, it doesn't matter. It just works and it's seamless because again, you have this very strong air interface that connects your device to all the cloud services. That's brilliant. So what, how do you sum up Currently, like in 2019, we are at Mobile World Congress, and uh, I think the Josh is high. It's really high. I can, I have, with this toast especially, I saw all the partners coming together and celebrating it. The celebrations are great. Uh, so, what is uh, currently your feeling, and what next? We'll end it with that. Yeah. Uh, the feeling now is excitement because 5G is here. 2018, right? 2020 is probably too late to get it started. 2018 is the year that many users worldwide will benefit from 5G and will experience 5G for the first time. And what's next is taking this beyond the phone and taking these benefits of 5G to cars, to the Internet of Things, to VR devices, to industrial applications, so we can all benefit of what 5G has been built for to connect kind of all kind of devices and to transform all kind of industries. Great, that's brilliant. So. Thank you so much, Thanks Ignacio. So much Thank you so much to, for talking about 5G and everything else. And uh, I want to congratulate you. Uh, you know, Qualcomm has been ahead, uh, one year ahead. So congratulations for that. And I hope to see more uh, from Qualcomm next year at MWC again. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for the interview, man. No, thank you so much.